You know, whether we like it or not, change can be good. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always comfortable or that we always want it, but it's not always the worst thing. And even when something is working for you and you're getting results, there's no harm in making little tweaks here and there because you might get even better results. So here's a look at nine tiny things that I'm doing differently with my money over the next 12 months. And these are nothing major, so they're easily duplicatable. So number one, the money that I plan to spend on iced coffee throughout the month, I'm gonna transfer those funds to my Dunkin' card on the first day of every month. So a while ago, I did a video explaining how I'm able to get free coffee by using a simple hack. And basically what I'll do is I'll use Ibotta, which is a cashback app. And I'll use it when I'm buying groceries or I'm buying other things throughout the week. And whatever I earn in cash back, I'll then use that specifically to purchase coffee. And I'm still doing this, but going forward over the next 12 months, I'm gonna tweak it slightly. So instead of waiting until I earn the cash back before transferring money to my Dunkin' card, what I'm gonna do is transfer $60 to my Dunkin' card at the beginning of the month. And then any funds that I earn through Ibotta, I will then use that to pay myself back. And the reason why I'm doing 60 is because I typically will buy coffee about three times a week. So that's about $15. So likewise, if you have a coffee habit and you don't wanna give it up, consider setting aside a specific amount putting that money on a separate card and then only using that card when you go. And once the money has been spent, you're done for the month. The second thing I'm doing is creating a monthly shopping list. So within the first few days of the month, I'm gonna think about everything that I wanna buy throughout that month and then I'll write it down. And I actually started doing this in December and it worked out pretty well. So within the first four or five days in the month, I went through and started adding some things to my Amazon cart and some things to some other carts but I didn't immediately buy them. Instead, I sat on the items for a few days or a few weeks to see if I really wanted to buy them. And by the end of the month, there were some items that I decided to go ahead and purchase, and there were also some items that I decided to remove. Now, I don't plan on doing any impulse purchases over the next 12 months, but at the same time, I'm not a robot and things happen. So if I do make an impulse buy, the third thing I'm gonna do is before making that purchase, I'm gonna ask myself, how do I feel in that moment? Emotions get a lot of us in trouble, especially when it comes to retail shopping. So my goal is really to just be more aware of that. So if I ask myself that question and I'm feeling sad, frustrated, angry, anxious, basically anything negative, I'm not gonna make the purchase. Instead, I'm gonna look for other ways to get my dopamine hit because that's essentially what's happening when we give into emotional spending and retail therapy. We want to feel better and we're using shopping as a way to cope. I'm also going to do a subscription audit every six months. I did this for the first time about four months ago where I basically sat down and evaluated whether I felt I was getting my money's worth with the services that I had and whether I could do without some services. And for me, a lot of these were really related to content creation. So what I decided to do was to scale back a little bit and kind of test the waters to see if I could still do my work effectively without having them. And if after three or four months, I realized that yeah, I am missing them, then I could resubscribe. However, as of today, I haven't felt the need to resubscribe to any of them. So going forward, I'm gonna make this a regular practice where every six months I sit down and I consider what I'm paying for to see if there's anything that I can let go. I'm also going to stop using my debit card so much. Now, currently I use my credit card for about 90% of my purchases, but for certain things like my nail appointments and my hair appointments, for whatever reason, I still tend to use my debit card and I don't even really know why, like I can't explain it. The only thing I could say is that, you know, over time it's just become a routine or muscle memory. But when it's all said and done, credit cards do offer more protections. Plus if you have a rewards card, you can get something back in return. So going forward, my plan is to use my credit card for all purchases whenever I can and then pay it off in full at the end of the month. And I'm also going to start micro investing with my credit card. For the past four or five years now, I've been using Acorns, which is a micro investing platform that will round up purchases to the nearest dollar and then invest the difference. But currently I only have my Acorns account linked to my debit card with my bank. Don't ask me why, cause I don't have an explanation for that either. So over the past few years, 
any purchases that I've made with my credit card have not been rounded up. However, as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to link my credit card to my Acorns account so I can start rounding up and investing the change from those purchases too. And if you're interested in investing but feel that you don't have a lot of experience or a lot of money, Acorns is definitely an easy way to get your feet wet. In addition to the roundup, you can also make one-time contributions into your account at any time starting at only $5, and they also offer a wealth of other features. So if you're interested, I will include a link below. And as a bonus, if you sign up using my referral link, Acorns will give you $5 to start. I'm also gonna get back into the habit of asking for discounts. And this isn't something that I'm gonna do on every occasion, but I will do it when I feel it's appropriate. This is something that I used to do quite often, but over the years, for whatever reason, Reason, I've kind of gotten out of the routine, but when I think back to when I was doing it on a regular basis, I used to save so much money. If I was at the checkout counter and I didn't have a coupon with me, I would ask the salesperson if they had a discount code behind the counter that they could scan for me. And sometimes they did. And when they scanned it, I would save 10%, 15%, sometimes as much as 25% just from opening my mouth and asking. And finally, every single month, I'm gonna try and declutter and remove at least one thing that I'm no longer using from the house. But instead of automatically defaulting and throwing it in the donation bin, what I wanna do first is see if I can sell it and get some money for it. Now, realistically, I know I probably won't be able to do this with every single item, but if I feel that it's worth my time, I will give it a try. 